Awesome. Thank you so much, Jesse. Hi, everyone. Um, as Jesse mentioned, my name is Charlyn, but I go by Char for short, so you can call me Char, like Charizard or Charmander. Um, and I'm super excited to be here to kind of share my story and experiences because I remember what it's like being a student and applying for internships and, you know, trying to start your first career after college. So a lot of the things I'm going to speak about today comes from my story and my experiences, what I currently do in the professional world of rec recruiting. Um, and one fun fact, too, is I actually put myself through college through schol scholarship pageantry. Um, so in doing pageantry, you learn a lot about interviewing, how to put your best self foot forward, um, because through that process, you get asked a lot of questions on stage and get interviewed by many judges behind the scenes as well. And so um, I'll be putting my best tips and practices from those experiences too. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get this party started. <laughs> So this is our agenda for today. We'll be going over these five different key points when it comes to rocking your next interview. We'll talk about seeing interviews um, in a different lens than you usually do and think about. We'll go over preparing before the interview, actually practicing your questions, um, what makes in-person and virtual interviews different, and then last but not least, your post-interview, what you should be doing after. So for today, you know, my biggest goal is to really equip you with the best uh, tools, resources, and practices to help you guys put your best foot forward um, when you are practicing for your next interview. So first tip in, it's all about the positive mindset and attitude. I know when you're thinking about, you know, that interview for, for an internship or your first job, we get nervous. I know I got really nervous about it because there's a lot of unknowns. You know, you don't know if you're going to get it. You don't know what you're going to do if you don't get it. You really want it so bad. So you get super nervous about it, right? Especially if it's your first time. And I think the biggest thing that I could, you know, that I would want to share with all of you guys is that it's all about the mindset and how you see interviews. Um, there has been two studies that have shown the power of positivity when you switch your thinking. So many Olympic athletes who complete who compete for the medals or when they practice, when they're asked, um, you know, what pays token towards your winning or making that shot, many of them say that they practice uh, positive thinking, visualization um, when it comes to training your mentality. And so by imagining yourself, you know, acing that interview or you know saying the right things. You, you put yourself in a healthy mindset to believe that you that you can do it, um, just like what Olympic athletes do. Another study also shows, um, there's this fun show uh, that showed on TV on National Geographic. It's called Brain, Grain, Brain Games, um, and they do a lot of cool science experiments. And one science experiment they showed was the power of positivity. So in this little video and science experiment they did, they chose two... Um, participants, participant A and B, to shoot like 10 shots on the basketball hoop. Um, and person A didn't have any experience, and when they were shooting, they didn't make any of the 10 shots. And then in the second round, they were blindfolded, and they had a crowd around them giving them positive affirmation, saying that they can do it, you made that shot, even though she didn't make any of it. And then when she took off her blindfold and was asked to make a shot again, and the crowd was cheering for her, she actually made four out of the 10 shots. And then you compare that to participant B. They were a professional basketball player. Um, and before the crowd came in, they made nine out of the 10 shots. But then when they brought that crowd in, they put the blindfold on, they were kind of discouraging them, saying that you can't make it, you can't do it. And then when he took off his blindfold and was trying to shoot, he made zero out of the 10 shots. So that is a prime example of how, you know, when you change your mind and thinking, you, the way you perform externally changes too. And so a couple things to think about when you're going into that next interview. Believe that you are the one for the job. Find your inner self-confidence and let go of that pressure <laughs> that you hold on um, when, when preparing for that interview and just really focus on that positive, you know, believing that you can do it. 
um, and embrace your nerves. I know many of us, when we have that nervousness, we're like, oh my gosh, like, why, why am I nervous? I don't like it. Embrace it. Cause that means you're breathing, you're living, you're a human. It's okay to have those nerves. They're there for a reason. So a couple best practices that you can do here to help change that mindset is to do power poses before your interview. I know it sounds silly, but um, back before COVID days, <laughs> when I was preparing before going into an interview, like before I went into the lobby or you know before I went to my car to go to the interview, I did power poses in front of the mirror. And so that's anything from like just standing up, putting your hands in the air, putting your hands on your hips, just feel powerful. And that just helps bring that physical energy to you um, instead of like sitting on your chair, crouching and like being, you know, just looking at your phone. Um, your body language says a lot when you do that. So, you know, spread your arms open and just like be happy and just, you know, do what you need to do to bring that energy in before you go into that interview. Other things you can do is also just tell yourself positive affirmations, you know, talk to yourself in the mirror and say, you can do it. You're going to rock this interview. You are amazing because it does make a difference. Um, and even early in my career, um, when I'm going to like a big event or I'm doing like a speech or a keynote, sometimes I tell myself to in the mirror. It's it sounds silly, but it helps a lot. And then a third of all, visualize your success. You know, think about it, dream about it, believe that you can do it and everything. And then last but not least, you know, practice and do what you need to do um, to, to build that self-confidence, whether it be um, doing your favorite activity or hobby, meditating to help calm your nerves. Um, you, know, you know yourself better than anyone else. And so you do you. <laughs> So prepping before the interview, I divided this into two categories. You have your knowledge and skills, and then you have your physical presentation. And so when I talk about knowledge and skills, um, some things that you should do is research the company. You can look at their newsrooms, uh, visit their mission, vision, value statements, read about their company. It's always a good idea to know who you're applying for and to show them that you understand this company and you know what's going on behind the scenes, right? And so it's good to just have that knowledge so that when you go into that interview, it could be a nice conversation starter. Or maybe in the middle of that interview, they might talk about that next new thing that just happened in their company. So by researching the company and seeing what's going on within, you'll be equipped um, to talk about that conversation or even ask your interviewer more about their company so you can understand it better. The second thing you wanna do is also review your resume and job description. I remember when I was applying to different internships and roles, um, you always have to cater your resume, right? So your resume will sometimes change. You're applying to a lot of different jobs. Sometimes it can get confusing. What did you submit? Which job did you apply for? So just keep it new and on top of mind and just review your resume the day before and just double check that job description so you remember you know, what are the top skills they're looking for for this role that you're applying and how can you match your experiences and resume um, to those top skills that they're looking for in the job that you're applying for. Always keep in mind your most relevant skills and experiences. So for example, um, let's say you're applying into the world of hospitality, right? So if you have a background in serving at a restaurant or working at a hotel, you probably want to keep those skills and experiences top of mind versus maybe an administrative role that isn't too relevant in that industry. And if you are in person, always print copies of your resume because um, it's always good to offer them in case they don't have a copy of your resume or sometimes they forget. You can always offer them your resume um, to have it in front of them. Finally, you want to prepare um, questions to ask them. As much as they are interviewing you, you are also interviewing them to understand if they would be, you know, the right company that you would want to work for, right? Because what you want in your career aspirations is just as important. And the last thing you want to do is go into a job that you think is the one. And then later on, it's actually not, right? So it's important to be curious, ask open-minded questions, learn from your interviewer's story, and use this as an opportunity to build a relationship and to network. Um, because, you know, who knows? The 
person that you meet in this interview, um, maybe they'll have you top in mind for a next opportunity or you'll apply to another job later on from the same company and it's the same person. So it's always good to expand your network and just kind of hear from them and how they got to their position and what they think about the company. And then the second thing to prepare for is your physical presentation. And what I mean by this is, is yourself, right? So on top of building your knowledge and skills about the job, what you're interviewing for, you also want to prepare yourself. Dress to impress. Um, it's important to dress to the company's culture um, and make sure when you're dressing up to like omit any distractions, right? It all depends on the industry and the company that you're applying for, right? So especially if it's in person and you have like nails done and let's say it's neon color, that could be very distracting for whoever is interviewing. They could be looking at your nails versus you, right? It's important that you look your best, um, whether it be putting your hair back so that's not in your face um, or putting your makeup on. It's always important to show your best self forward um, and everything because you yourself are a walking brand and you wanna make sure you, um, you, you show yourself as you would in the actual job. Um, I remember when I applied for T-Mobile, I didn't realize that the company was just t-shirt and jeans for their company culture and how they dress. And my my interviewer, after I got the job, actually told me that I dressed a bit too formal, which isn't always a bad thing. It's better to dress good and formal than something like, you know, very casual and not well. Um, but keep in mind, you know, how does the company uh, dress too? So. If you don't know, it's always okay to ask your, your recruiter or whoever you're talking to, you know, what should I wear for the interview to get their advice? And then finally, take care of yourself. I think we all have had the experience before that midterm or test, you know, we're staying up and studying at the 12th hour <laughs> to prepare for that exam and it can be very tiring. So the biggest key here is to make sure you take care of yourself before your interview. Rest up sleep early, eat some breakfast, prepare your mentality. You want to go into that interview feeling good and 110%. You do not want to feel tired and you do not want to feel hungry when you're in that interview. So next up, we have practicing for the actual interview and the questions. So questions, there are different types of questions that your interviewer will ask you, depending on the role that you're applying for. Um, one of the common questions that they ask are behavioral questions. So things that you've done, such as, tell us a time when you got in conflict with a team member, what did you do? Or, you know, let's say that you're on a job and you see a teammate doing something wrong. What would you do in that situation? Questions about your behavior and how you would act. Other types of questions and call uh, include your experiences, opinions, and personality questions, as I like to call it. Um, sometimes you'll get that one question that they they throw at you that seems totally irrelevant. So, for example, I remember when I was interviewing for Yelp, the last question my interviewer asked me was, "If you could describe yourself in one word, what would it be?" And I did not practice for that. But, you know, luckily with my experiences, you know, with pageantry, they teach you to really think on the spot and to, you know, answer it quickly. And I said, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Sounds silly, but it really, you know, my interviewer got a kick out of it. And she for sure remembered me for that answer um, and, and why I answered it. Because I said, you know, it's, it's the answer to say when you don't know how to describe it or say it. You know, something amazing, something wonderful, right? So... It's always a good idea to be prepared for those little personality questions that they might throw at you, like what's your favorite color or what would you do if this happened? You can definitely Google um, all these types of questions and they will give you a prolifera of examples that you can um, use to practice. This is also very common and if you haven't heard of it as a student yet, you will eventually um, during your time at UW. But when you answer your questions, especially behavioral questions, you want to answer it in this STAR format. And STAR stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. This is the framework you want to use when answering, you know, like your behavioral questions. You want to describe the situation and scenario. 
Um, and then talk about the task. What was the responsibility you were given? And then what action did you take? Based on that scenario and task, what did you do? And based on your action and what you did, what was the result of the outcome? So for example, if your interviewer asks you, tell us a time when you were in conflict with a teammate um, at work or in, in a school project, your answer could look something like this. One time I was in an economics class where we had to do a big end of the year project. We had five people on our team and I, and in doing this project, I was in conflict with one of my team members on how we should move forward with this project. And given that conflict and trying to delegate responsibilities, um, because we're in conflict, what I did is that I sat down with the person that I was conflicted with and I took the time to understand, you know, why they believed what they believe and to explain, you know, why I believed this certain way. And in hearing them and their a story and what how they thought and being able to explain my background and story we were able to come to a consensus and agreement on how we should move forward with the project and understanding both views so that is an example of how you can use the star format i described the situation of this project what we had to do we had to delegate and figure out how to move forward with this project um, and because there was conflict i ended up talking to this person and just listening to them and sharing with them how I felt and then and understanding both stories as a result we were able to come to an agreement and move forward with the project. So here is a list of common interview questions um, that that you will come across at one point or another. Feel free to screenshot this um, for, for your reference but some common questions include you know tell me about yourself or why, why this company, why T-Mobile, why Microsoft? What are your strengths and weaknesses? When it comes to your strengths and weaknesses, I usually, usually like to keep this um, with a two-one ratio where I share two strengths and then one weakness. And making sure when you share your strengths that you give like a one-two sentence on why that is a strength of yours. And then with your weakness, making sure that, um, you know, you share that one weakness you have, but also share you know, what are you doing to improve that weakness so you can kind of uh, shape it into a positive. And I know when it comes to thinking about your weakness, you kind of shy away from it, like, why would I share what I'm weak about and all that stuff? But it's important, the importance of understanding your weakness is that you understand, you know, what where your weak points are skill-wise, because, you know, we all have strengths and weaknesses. You know, we're not all A plus in every single area. And your interviewer wants to know that you understand yourself and where you know you can grow and everything. And so by understanding a room of improvement within yourself, you share with them that I acknowledge that this isn't my strongest point, but I acknowledge that. And this is what I'm doing to mediate that and everything. Um, we'll not go over everything because we can talk about every single question, um, but these are some common questions just to keep in mind for your next interview that you can use to practice. Okay, so practicing the interview best practices and tips. Body language is just as important as articulating the answers to your questions. So remember to smile and to maintain good eye contact. Um, you don't have to stare them down. And I know sometimes we get nervous in giving eye contact. And if you do, um, one tip that I suggest is kind of looking over their head so you're not like directly staring into their eyes if you get really nervous about that. Um, and be mindful when you're talking with your hands because sometimes if you like talking with your hands, it can be kind of distracting to them, right? It's okay now and then to use uh, gestures with your hands, but be aware if you're doing too much of it because it can be distracting. And then finally, how you talk. Be mindful of your diction and your tone. Um, you know, are you talking monotone or maybe in like a, a low voice? Um, watch for your uhs and ums. Sometimes when we answer questions, we don't realize it, but sometimes we like to insert uhs and ums, like oh and uh, and you don't realize it, right? So one tip I have for this um, is to record yourself, whether it be a voice recording or a little video, you know, just practicing answering questions and then listening 
to it later, uh, you might pinpoint that you you might be a person that says a lot of us and ums. I've I've worked with some students who did not realize at all that they were saying us and ums. So be aware of those small things that you say and do when you answer your questions. And then when you do phone interviews, understand for phone interviews that one of the biggest uh, tips for this is how how you respond to the questions in your voice. Um, I've I've worked with many uh, sponsors and pageants and different hiring managers where they mention that one of the biggest success that they've seen um, in people that they interview or listen to on the phone are people who articulate a pleasant voice. So if you think about it, when you're on the phone and maybe you're hearing someone that's talking really low, negative, unenthusiastic, you're going to feel like they don't care or you know, maybe they're not the best person that you want to hire, right? Versus someone that's, you know, pleasant when they're talking to you, using different like tonage, something upbeat. Uh, people naturally respond better to a pleasant voice. Just like in customer service, if you're trying to book a hotel or talking to someone, you know, over the phone, people definitely respond better to someone who speaks, you know, pleasantly <laughs> behind, behind the phone. Same applies for when you're doing a virtual interview or in person. And then crafting your answer. This is one of my favorite best practices and tips, and that is to bring a notepad and pen with you. If it's in front of your computer or in person, always have a notepad and pen in handy. Remember, it's okay to take notes during your interview. If they say something important, um, you know, jot that down if you want to remember that, right? And just, you know, you can simply let them know, just say, hey, I brought, you know, a notepad and pen if it's okay for me to take notes during the interview. Um, having those tools is, is great to have because when they're asking you questions, especially if you're not good at listening, because for me, I'm a visual learner. Listening isn't my strongest. I have to focus really hard when I'm taking in audio. Uh, I always have a note and, notepad and pen to write down. And so when they're asking the question, what I will do is literally write down some bullet points of the question so I can remember what it is and look at it on my piece of paper. It's okay to do that, you guys. When it comes to answering your question, it's also okay to pause. I know in the heat of the moment, you wanna give that quick answer really quick on the, on, you know, on the spot, but you know, sometimes we don't know that perfect answer, right? So it's okay to pause and think about your answer, put it together in your head, write it down on your notepad, so you can give them a well-informed answer. Um, simply just communicate with them. Say, hey, um, just give me a moment to gather my thoughts down, you know, and they'll totally understand and they'll let you, they'll let you do that. Um, and then don't be afraid to ask them to repeat the question. You know, with all the nerves and the practice, uh, the next, you know, the last thing you wanna do is not <laughs> remember what they asked. So feel free to ask them to repeat the question and everything and write, write it down on your notepad. So these are some pretty, pretty key things that I found very helpful when, when I did interviews. Um, and it's okay to do that too for your next uh, interview too. So this is uh, the virtual interview and checklist. There isn't a significant difference between in-person and virtual interviews. The only difference is the technology between you and the interviewer, right? And so there are two types of virtual interviews that I like to categorize it as, and that is pre-recorded video submissions and then real-time like video interviews. And so pre-recorded video submissions, some companies and organizations will use technology platforms for you to pre-record yourself as a pre-screening um, for your interview submission. And so what this typically will look like is that um, they'll have you log into this platform on your internet browser, and then it'll have the question in front of you. And then basically you're in front of the camera and you're recording yourself answering the question before you click submit. And sometimes there will be, you know, multiple questions, three, four, five, just depending. Um, and if you have, if you, if this is, if this applies to you in your interview, um, don't be afraid to also ask them, you know, saying, hey, I've never done a pre-recorded video submission. Do you have any tips, any best practices for me? You know, what can I do to prepare myself for this video interview? It's always good to ask instead of going in, you know, blinded, not knowing what to expect. It's always okay, whatever questions you have out of curiosity, to ask your interviewer via email. 
um, because they want to see you succeed as much as you want to see yourself succeed. And then finally, you have the real-time video interview where they interview you with, you know, Skype or, or Zoom um, face-to-face in real time. So here are some six uh, checklist items that you want to make sure that you check the box on for setting yourself up for success for virtual interviews. First and foremost, find a quiet space. Make sure that you put the dogs and pets away or you let your family and siblings know that you're going to be doing an interview. Um, so that they can respect your quiet space and everything. Um, and then find a good lighting. Um, you want to make sure that you're like in front of a window or you turn on the lights in your room so that they can see your face. You don't want it to be dark. And then third, make sure you check and test your technology equipment. Make sure that you have your adapter plugged in, your laptop is fully charged, Check your internet, your router, your modem. Um, you know, if you want secure internet, make sure you do the e-internet cord so that everything's extra secure. Um, and also have backups too. Like in case something happens to your laptop or computer, have your cell phone at hand with your email so you can easily click on that link and get back on the call, right? Or you can quickly email them to let them know, hey, something happened to my technology. I'll be there in a second. So have that backup just in case uh, your computer, something happens to your computer. And then fourth, make sure that your webcam is at eye level. Um, you don't wanna have your laptop at your lap looking down or like staring all the way up. It's a little awkward if you do that. You wanna make sure you show your best uh, side of the face when you're in the interview. So have it at eye level, whether you need to prop some books underneath uh, or find a box, you just wanna make sure it's at eye level. Fifth you wanna make sure you choose a non-distracting background. Um, it's so important that you make sure that there's nothing crazy in your background, especially if you're in a room, if you have some sort of crazy poster or your bed isn't made, you know, make sure everything is neat so that your interviewer is focusing on you and not your background. So the reason why this is so important and many people don't realize it, um, I remember when I was applying to my job, after I got my role, my manager told me how, and, and when I interviewed, I did the pre-recorded video submissions. She told me how there was another lady who had the same experience and story as I did. And the only difference between me and her was that she recorded in her bedroom where you could see that her bed was messy and it wasn't made. And then I chose just a plain wall background. And even though we had the same experience and the same background, um, Obviously, my manager ended up having to choose me but because you can't help but naturally think if they don't make their bed, like, how are they organized, right? Um, as much as we don't want to be biased or judged, naturally, as humans, that's what we think, right? Um, so choose a non-distracting background because it makes a huge difference. And then lastly, tune in 15 minutes early to test your video link and your technology because anything can happen at the last minute. So make sure you're ready to rock and roll and to click um, the enter button to enter that interview room. So post interview, um, these are three things you definitely wanna do after your interview is done. Number one, send a thank you note. Um, send them a quick email just thanking the people who interviewed you um, for their time and that you look forward to seeing them. Um, by giving a thank you note, you show your appreciation, you show that you care and that you, you really want this job, you really care about the company and it helps you stick out from the group too. Um, as someone who works in the recruiting space and being that person behind the uh, table at job fairs, you meet with hundreds and hundreds of students. And out of all the students I meet at a job fair, the students that I remember are the students who follow up via LinkedIn or follow up with me via email saying, hey, you know, thank you for speaking to me. I saw you at this event, um, had a follow up question, just want to say thank you and so forth. Um, so it's always a good idea to do that. Um, second of all, you want to follow up if it's past the hear back date. A good question to always ask at the end of the interview is what to expect after your interview is done. Will they email you? Will they call you? Will, they, will you hear back after, after a week? It's always a good idea to ask what to expect after. And if it's past that deadline, you know, don't take it personally. Sometimes 
you know, the interviewer is busy. There's a lot of things behind the scenes. So just simply call or email them and ask, hey, I haven't heard, would just like to follow up and see what's going on and everything. And then finally, always ask for feedback. Always, always ask for feedback. Whether you don't get it or you do get it, interviewing is a skill. Um, it's it's a skill and you and you gotta keep practicing the skill until you get better. And sometimes you can't better get sometimes you can't get better unless you know what you can do to improve. And so one thing I always do after an interview, I always ask, hey, you know, I know I didn't get the job, that's okay. Um, do you have any feedback on what went well on my interview or what I can do to improve for my next opportunity? Um, that's something you can ask them. Or, you know, if you get the job, just ask your hiring manager or interviewer, you know, what did I do um, that went so well during my interview um, for me to be here today, right? And so that allows you to just be self-aware and to know what can you improve on and what you're rocking on. Okay, so that nears the end of this workshop. Um, as a summary, these are the five key points that we went over today on how to rock your next virtual interview. Remember that it's all about the positive mindset and attitude and how you think about the interview. You know, go into it believing that you're the one for the job and that you can do it. Um, second of all, make sure that you prepare for that interview by doing your research, taking care of your physical body so that you're 100% on that day of. And then actually get comfortable answering the questions. Practice answering those um, interview questions so you can get comfortable talking, right? Remember that it's a conversation. Um, one thing that I have uh, young ladies practice in my pageant when I coach them is I have them practice with their friends. You know, when you speak to your friends and family, it's a normal conversation. You feel comfortable, right? You want to bring that similar essence when you're in a professional setting because you want to articulate, you know, who you are. You want to be genuine. You want to show your personality, right? And it's easy to get in that mindset of, oh my gosh, I'm in an interview and I want to be very formal and everything, right? And sometimes you end up being a robot, right? Be comfortable, relax, breathe. It's a conversation. They're just trying to get to know you and you're just trying to let them know, you know, who you are as a person. And then virtual interviews, always test your technology beforehand and find a good place to set up. And then finally, after the interview, follow up, ask for feedback, say your thank yous um, and everything. So overall, you know, when I think about after graduating UW and being where I am today, I remember um, finding, prior to finding my current job, I applied to over a hundred, a hundred jobs uh, during, during the fall, I think. Before I got my job the next the next year, I applied to over 100 jobs, which was a lot, right? And I was the kind of student that practiced, asked for feedback. And I remember after applying to 100 jobs, I was like, oh my gosh, why am I not getting through? I practice my interview. I make sure I ask for feedback. Why am I not getting through, right? And, you know, one, one thing I learned after going through that experience and now working in the recruiting world is that you can be the most qualified candidate for the job, you can practice, 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 and be the best of the best. And sometimes you won't get it, you know, and that's okay. Remember that's okay. Cause sometimes you'll get several no's before you get that amazing yes for that internship opportunity or job opportunity. And just remember, we I know when you apply, you really wanna get that internship position, right? But remember that everything happens for a reason and that there will always be several other opportunities out there for you to apply for. So it's not the end of the world. What matters is that you try your best, you put your best foot forward, you ask for feedback, you carry that with you and you practice that and move that forward to your next interview because eventually you know you will rock that next interview and get that next awesome job or internship that you land. So that is the end of my workshop. Let's talk. What questions do you guys have? Thank you so much. That was great. That was really fantastic. So many great tips. Um, so we already have questions coming through. Um, students, as you think of more questions, feel free to just type those in the Q&A. 
Um, so first couple, there were a few on pre-recorded. Um, so I know you mentioned that you had done a pre-recorded uh, interview uh, for your T-Mobile position. Is that pretty common practice at T-Mobile to do that first before a face-to-face -face interview? Yes, I think with big companies, big corporate companies, it's getting more uh, common, I would say, especially given the pandemic. Um, it's it's pretty common for them to use pre-recorded just because sometimes a lot of people apply and from behind the scenes, we got to screen through people. So sometimes it's a phone screening, sometimes the pre-recorded video. Um, I remember when I was at UW 2016, I applied for an internship at Nordstrom and I used this platform called HireVue. And that was my first time using a pre-recorded uh, like interview thing. And so that was completely new. Um, and one thing to note too, if you do a pre-recorded interview, sometimes there will be options for you to pre-record. If I have that option, pre like use that option and maximize that feature. Re-record yourself if you're not happy with that. And that's okay if you re-record yourself 50 times. That's what I did. And my manager jokes all the time about how I re-recorded myself like 57 times. But hey, it's embarrassing, but that showed them that I really cared about the opportunity and I wanted to nail it on the head. So. Yeah. Um, and so for those pre-recorded interviews, um, since you're not speaking with a specific person, um, do you have any recommendations for following up after that? Or is that not the right time to follow up? After, is it after a pre-recorded interview? Yeah. yeah. It's okay to follow up after whoever, you know, if you've made it through, it's most likely you'll get, you know, a personal email from someone saying, hey, you made it through the first round. Here's a recording for the pre-recorded interview. So after you do that, it's totally okay to follow up um, and everything. I remember when I did my pre-recording for Nordstrom, I had a technology issue <laughs> and my internet disconnected for the last question. And so luckily they had a final question saying, hey, if you have any other comments, use this use this section and I had to use that section to answer my last question. Um, and if they don't have that, follow up with them via email. Follow up, follow up, follow up. It's okay to do that. Great, thank you. Um, so a question about tips, uh, specifically if a student gets stuck on a programming question, what would be the best course of action there? A programming question, um, if we're speaking in terms of technicality, so let's say you're in IT and they're maybe asking you about like uh, some sort of programming language like Python or CSS, if you get stuck on it and you're doing a pre-recording, um, I think the best thing, you know, in that, in that moment, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable and say, you know, I'm familiar with this, but I'm going to be honest, I'm, I, I'm not sure, I don't fully know. And so I think it's best to just be vulnerable and be honest um, instead of trying to chug through and not get the right answer because it will be obvious when you're answering it. Um, if you really don't know, it's okay just to communicate and say so. And then you'll know next time to practice that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, do you have maybe an example of how to handle the weakness question? Um, a specific example I know you said um, yeah yeah so an example on how to handle the weakness so if you're not an organized person you could say one weakness I have is organization skills I'm not I know I'm not the most organized person and in acknowledging that what I've done to help make myself better in this area is you know I have a planner I write down everything on my calendar, when they're due, what I need to do next, and I set goals for myself throughout the week so I can help organize all my projects and tasks to keep me aligned. Um, and so far in doing that, I've seen improvement. It's not perfect, um, but I know I will be getting better. So that's an example of how you say you're not organized, but this is what I'm doing to improve myself. Thanks. Um, let's see, uh, what's your best advice for a quick 10 minute interview and what are the main things to focus on in such a short amount of time? Yeah, I would say in general, and this, I'm going to speak in general, big picture wise, in any interview that you do, um, you want to share your story and who you are as a person. And that comes with being genuine and just, you know, being relaxed and just being yourself and answering questions, right? And that only comes with time as you practice and get more confident and get more comfortable. Because um, with ladies that I coach in pageant for interviews, I always tell them, 
you know, if I remove your name from the resume or if I don't know who you are and I close my eyes and I just listen to you, well, I know it's you or could it be anyone else? Anyone can say I graduated from UTub, UW and got a business degree. But what differentiates you, right? And the thing that's gonna differentiate you is your story. What are you passionate about? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you applying to this role? Why is it important to you, right? And it's that unique answer that you give and kind of sprinkle on to whatever answer you give that's gonna set you apart because you're speaking from the heart and you're telling genuinely why you're here. It's more than just, I want the job and I need the internship. There's a reason why you're applying for it, right? So just tap into that inner heart answer. Thanks. Um, we do have a lot of questions just generally about uh, T-Mobile's process and what that looks like. And if you have any tips for students who either are interested in applying or maybe already going through that process. Yeah, so um, since, you know, this is a student thing, I'll talk about like internships, right? So how the process works at T-Mobile as far as internships goes is that you apply and if you make it through, then sometimes you'll get a phone screening. And if you get a phone screening, um, you know, like I mentioned during this workshop, it's all about, you know, how you answer it in the phone, your voice, your diction, your tone, um, and making sure that you, you hashtag be yourself because that's what T-Mobile is all about. We want you to be your, your genuine self because um, we care about who you are as an individual and we want you to you know contribute your unique story to our diverse culture. Um, and then if you make it through the phone interview, sometimes you'll get the pre-recorded video or the in-person interview and the same thing applies. You know, just practice and, and be your genuine self. Great, thank you. So many great tips. Um, I think we have time for one more. Um, let's see. Uh, so the, the tell me about yourself question um, can be very big. Um, so what kind of answer are they expecting or how, how is it best to answer that type of question? Yeah, in any answer you give, I like to think of it as an essay, right? You have your intro, your body, and then your conclusion. Think of it as that organized sandwich. Just like when you're formulating, formulating your answer, you know, answer the question quick, and then, you know, what's that supporting paragraph for that question, um, and then, like, other things to expand on it. So tell me about yourself. What uh, A way that I like to format it is I say, um, you know, what my year is in school, what I'm studying, um, when I'm going to be graduating, what degree, you know, education, talk about your education and what you're studying, um, and then what your aspirations are. I want to do this as my career, um, and this is what I'm passionate about. So talk about your career, your aspirations, what you're passionate about. Um, and then finally, your past work experiences or what you're currently working on. And then at the end, to tie everything together, like, why are you applying for this job? And that's an opportunity to really just say whatever you want them to know, right? So to sum it up, education, career aspirations, uh, current or past work, what you're passionate about and like, why, why are you applying for that job?